Local microclimate, weather conditions and roof exposure is important when choosing a roofing material. It affects the minimum roof pitch or slope and the slate's headlap dimension and slate size. Patrick and Eve have chosen three roofing materials. On the south side, all of the roof area is covered with solar collectors and with photovoltaic collectors. On the north side, they've got a grass roof here forming a wildflower meadow. And on the main bulk of the roof, it's going to be natural slate. Most of Dublin's 18th, 19th and early 20th century buildings were roofed with natural Bangor Blue Welsh slate. Many of these historic roofs are still intact, having successfully weathered many storms over the last 200 years. The original slates still in situ are in good condition. Loose slates and other typical defects have mainly been caused by corroded nail fixings and fatigued lead or copper flashings. As an architect, I'm very enthusiastic about our natural heritage and I love to see people returning to use of well-proven natural traditional materials like this well sought after Bangor Blue well slate. We often take our roofs for granted, not consciously realising the important task they have to perform, protecting buildings from our most severe weather conditions, often located at extreme heights, making it difficult for maintenance. In Ireland, with their extreme wind-driven rain conditions, slated pitch roofs formed a very important part of the architectural expression of all our buildings, until the advent of cheaper, less performing flat roofs. Buildings in Ireland before the 18th century had steeper pitch roofs, often at 45 degree slopes or over. The Georgians refined this to a more subdued pitch of about 35 degrees, where they sought to express the horizontal parapet coping and building line as an ordered streetscape aesthetic. They played down the roof profile, often hiding it behind a parapet when viewed from street level. This lower pitched roof required a much more effective method of weathering than had previously been used. The exceptional characteristics of this Welsh slate made it an obvious choice for Georgian Dublin's refined architecture. In rural Ireland, thatch was common on small vernacular houses as the building's location and transport restrictions would determine the roofing material. Buildings located far from ports or close to small Irish quarries would often use the local slate, whereas it was easier for Dublin to ship slates from Wales. The Georgian building boom of the 1780s ensured that slates from the Penryn Quarry in North Wales would be a feature of Ireland's built heritage for hundreds of years to follow. To uncover more about the origins of Welsh slate, I'm heading to Bethesda in North Wales to meet Elwyn Hughes, a local historian. Bangor Blues are very common tradition slates in Ireland. They came from here in Wales. Oh yes, they came from, from Bethesda actually and the name Bangor was uh, attached to them probably because of uh, the fact that they were shipped from Porth Penryn at Bangor to various parts of the world. Ireland, um, Germany, France and so on. They're known here as the Penryn Blue as well as Bangor Blue. But there is evidence of slate being shipped from uh, this area um, as far back as the 15th century. But uh, in actual fact, um, the Penryn family started the quarry uh, here in 1784. Driving through North Wales, I'm very conscious of the strong culture of Welsh slate, reflected through the roofs of their built heritage. From steep pitched medieval to 16th century inns like this famous Gross Inn to more elaborate 18th century streetscape architecture. Like Ireland, these roofs have to withstand severe wind-driven rain conditions, which has made slate a well-proven solution here. Six kilometres from the port of Penryn, on the edge of Snowdonia National Park, is the quarry where the famous Bangor Blue slate is mined. 500 million years ago, large granite mountains eroded into the sea and began to form layers of fine sediment. This dense mixture of minerals compressed under high pressure, forming very dense mudstone. 400 million years later, two continents collided, squeezing the geological crystals into parallel cleavage, creating slate. A unique feature of this quarry is the wide range of colours produced by the minerals and metamorphosis of the diverse sedimentary seams. The slate rock is excavated and transported from the quarry to be processed. I'm off to meet Alan Smith of Welsh Slate to find out more about it.
The quality of the slate in Wales as such, we can make the smallest, thinnest slate to the, the really large slate. And that's qu quite unique. It's the geology and the quality of the rock of the ground in Wales which allows us to do that. For example, on the continent, we would sell to Europe these relatively small slates. Irish size is this one, which is a 500, a 300 millimetre slate. Because of the quality of Welsh slate, we, we can make very large slates. If you look at the, the old buildings, the old churches in Ireland, you will see this is quite a common size. And bigger ones than castles too. Absolutely. Yeah. Besides all these different colours and thicknesses, this stone wall and flagstone pavement is also Penryn slate. What is slate made of? Right, very good question, Duncan. Um, slate is basically, in its, in its simplest form, it is mud which has been compacted and compressed with all the crystals being realigned in one direction. Here we've got all the crystals are aligned in one direction and this allows you to have the cleavage which means you can split the slate very finely. Firstly, the large slabs are cut into rectangular blocks by diamond-tipped circular saws. Cutting slate is now a very modern process. In contrast to this, the highly skillful technique of splitting the slate into its required thickness is still a very traditional method, carried out for hundreds of years by craftsmen using only a hammer and chisel. Slates vary in thickness from 4 to 6 mm, 6 to 8 and 8 to 10 mm. The thicker 10 mm slates, known as Celtic, mostly go to Ireland. The slates are then cut to size and dressed from the underside to produce their final accurate and square dimensions. It gives this feathered edge, mm -hmm. which is... That's the texture of the slate, that, It's it? part of the aesthetics. Yeah. It does help the water drain off the slate. Mm -hmm. It stops the wind getting underneath the slate yeah, by giving right. it a feathered so it's edge. It's got a good functional reason it's too, functional and an reason. aesthetic reason. And the nail holes then? Punch it through from the back, and it is important that you do it from the back because what you need is this recess which okay. where you can bury your nail head. Right, so you can countersink the, the nail counter, head. That's right. Slate is a natural material that requires little energy to produce. It's durable, climate resisting, dependable and has proven longevity. However, quarrying over the last few hundred years has left a major scar on this scenic landscape. How do you deal with this sort of environmental issue? The majority of the landscape will be restored. The original contours will be redeveloped and we are growing, say, 6,000 trees and shrubs a year which we plant around the site for restoration. The Penryn Quarry is now owned by a Northern Ireland company, Lagan Building Solutions. It's managed by Peter Lagan, who is investing in this Bangor Blue well slate to ensure its future use in quality pitch roofs in Ireland. Pitch roofs are a major part of the solution for all new buildings to address the daunting challenges brought about by climate change and depleting energy supply. Aesthetically pleasing, durable and functional, these well-tested, traditional well-slated buildings of the past provide ecological architects and skilled tradesmen with inspiration for creative new concepts and designs.